Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Christina Gray, uh, the MLA for Edmonton Mill Woods and the official opposition House Leader. And I'm speaking to you today from Treaty 6 territory and land uh, that our Métis people share a very deep connection with. And I'm joined with my colleague, Kathleen Ganley, our critic for energy. Later today, we expect the current sitting of the Alberta Legislature to wrap up. My summary of the past 13 weeks is that this session has been a total failure for the UCP. They've been entirely engrossed in their own internal drama and they have failed to address the single most important issue facing Albertans today. And that issue, of course, is the punishing monthly bills that Albertans are struggling to pay. Many of these bills have grown by hundreds of dollars a month because of decisions made by the UCP government. Now beside me is some of the bills that Albertans have sent us. What we've seen through this session is the UCP consistently putting the greed of lobbyists and profitable corporations ahead of real Alberta families. Inflation is higher than it has been in a generation and the price of everything from groceries to children's clothing is soaring. But the UCP presented a budget that will charge Alberta families an extra billion dollars in income taxes through bracket creep, while at the same time reducing the real value of child and family benefits, seniors' benefits, income support, and AISH. They forced up the price of tuition, and they increased the interest on student debt. They removed price protections that we put in for car insurance. And now Alberta drivers are paying more every month just to keep their cars on the road. The UCP is even pay asking Albertan families to pay more to go camping. After 13 weeks in the legislature, the UCP has only made costs higher for Alberta families. And it's no wonder that young Albertans are leaving the province at an unprecedented rate. But there is another set of bills that are getting bigger every month, and I'm going to hand things over to Kathleen to say more about that. Thanks, Christina. As you said, as a result of UCP policies, Albertans are paying more. They're paying more income tax, more property tax, more tuition, more interest on student debt, more camping fees, and more for their car insurance. But on top of that, there's utilities. The UCP removed the rate cap on electricity and now the bills hitting Albertans' doorsteps are hundreds of dollars higher. The natural gas price has hit a 30-year high and that pain gets passed on to families. Over 13 weeks of sitting in the legislature obsessing over their leadership, the UCP has failed to do anything about this. I won't go through every single lie, delay and mistake the UCP has made in their rebate program. The rebates themselves are so small, one UCP MLA even called them paltry. On top of that, not a single Albertan has gotten a rebate so far, and the UCP still can't give Albertans a straight answer about when they will. The UCP's own regulations says that it could be as late as December 31st. I'm sure we will hear from the government house leader congratulating himself on the number of bills that he's put through this session. but. I'd say he's missing the point entirely because it is these bills right here that are the ones piling up on Albertans' kitchen tables and those are the bills that they're concerned about. And by every measure, those bills have gotten worse under the UCP. Now they're going to spend the summer scheming and plotting against each other with no one looking out for Alberta families, which is why we need a new government. The Alberta New Democrats are a unified team. We are energized and we are ready to lead. We will always be focused on Albertans, on what Albertans need, and on keeping costs for Albertans low. Thank you, and we're both happy to take your questions. And we'll start with questions in person. Hello. Hello. So they've made it pretty clear, the government, I mean, that this is not going to this leadership thing. That's not, they're focused on the people, they're focused on the public business. Do you not, despite the fact of the leadership race, why do you not take them at their word on that? I can okay. Um, I mean, Why is it I think. I guess for a leadership race to make it hard to focus. Maybe that's my question. Well, I would say that they have been infighting for months at this point. 
Uh, and over the course of that infighting, they clearly haven't been focused on the people. They haven't managed to get rebates out the door. Uh, they haven't done anything about insurance. Uh, the healthcare system is in a state of near collapse, even according to the Alberta Medical Association. So, I mean, yeah, they seem to be focused elsewhere. Okay, and sorry, I just got this on the way over, and uh, you're senior members of caucus, so maybe you know. I'm seeing uh, an email from one of your staffers. I think Melissa's one of your staffers, right? She's a caucus staffer, right? Sorry, who? Melissa Dunphy? Yes. Play, paid by the public, right? She's on the party. She's on the party. So yeah, she moved because over. I guess I, the reason I ask is I'm trying to clarify the, how you're using your money here because you're quoting Cam Heenan on the Prasad Panda thing. I mean, Cam Heenan, we're not in an election. Cam Heenan, I'm sure he's a perfectly reasonable person, but he doesn't speak for anybody. He doesn't speak for, I mean, you know, we, uh, it seems like the caucus is using members of the public. You would have to, so the, we do have comms. Well, why would I get it from Melissa then? How does this come on, Kathleen? How does this work? So you're gonna. What's the policy, I guess, now then? So you're gonna start having your staffers send out emails and comments from people who aren't elected but are running for you. What's what's the policy here? And have you run this by the ethics commissioner? So the party, the NDP party, has a central office. There are people who work in that central office, and they work with candidates. It's I don't think uncommon to have comms staff. When I was a candidate in 2015, before I was elected, we had comms people that worked with us then. Uh, so I don't, I, I you, don't think that's cool? uncommon. I, I mean, this is new to me. I've never seen a year before an election, unelected Albertans being put up as, as critics for the opposition, given, given the, the stature of a, an opposition critic. And it's being done, and I'm sure if I look at Melissa's email, it'll be clear to me that she's on party time. So yeah, you're, you're good with this. That I don't think that this perhaps makes it look like perhaps we're melding public money with campaign campaigning. Well, again, the party office is paid entirely through donations. So um, the staff at Sorry, the party office are paid entirely through donations. Critic? Sorry, who's your infrastructure critic? Uh, that's a really good question. Why is Cam Heenan speaking for your infrastructure critic? One would assume your infrastructure critic is a little bit more uh, up on these issues, wouldn't you think? So, Dean, I'm happy to take a look at the release. Well, no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm happy to get back to you with an opinion. Well, I haven't I'm seen it, about, so I, I don't know what it says. Me what your policy is now, and it seems like you're mixing. There's a potential mixing of party and public money here to promote NDP candidates. And I'm just wondering if you can help me understand what caucus has discussed in terms of the policy. I can tell you that the party staff work with candidates and caucus staff work with MLAs. Sometimes MLAs work with party staff as well because we are also candidates. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, so on utilities, the bill in the legislature has passed that has enabled these rebates. So isn't isn't the ball now on those utility companies to get those electricity rebates out the door? Isn't it the company's turn to act now? So, I mean, the onus is on the government. The government is the one that promised rebates to Albertans, and it is on them to act. They promised those rebates months and months ago. Um, they didn't mention a time delay at that time. And so I think that the onus is entirely on the government to get those rebates out the door. And how would they do that, though? Like, <laughs> I, I thought that what they did is they passed this law to enable the rebates, and now it's the co company. So what, what do you want the government to do now? I mean, that's certainly the mechanism they've chosen. Um, there was a pretty long lead time between when they said they were going to bring in the rebates and when they introduced the legislation. Mm -hmm. There was an even longer lead time between when the legislation came in and the regulations came out. So if this was a government that was operating sensibly for Albertans, they would have known what mechanism they were going to use in advance of making the announcement. But that's not what they did. They went out, they promised people money, uh, and then they turned around and failed to get it into their hands. And whatever incompetence was going on behind the scenes that caused that delay, that's, I mean, that's not Albertans' fault, and they don't deserve to pay the price and to have to wait because of 
the UCP's decisions. Hi, Janet French from the CBC. My questions are a little more big picture. Okay. Um, like having watched this session compared to previous UCP led sessions, there just didn't seem to be like a ton of meat in this legislation, right? It's very like, spe very specific or lots of housekeeping, like, oh, we're gonna combine these acts together, whatever. Why do you yeah. think that is compared to the previous sessions when there were like really quite fundamental policy changes? You're absolutely correct that the majority of this session was housekeeping items, items of uh, lower import, uh, and items that did not address uh, the main priorities for Albertans. Uh, the reason for that is because of how distracted this government has been with their own internal drama, with their leadership, with their trying to scramble to hold on to power. Uh, and so bringing forward into this legislature nothing that addressed energy bills, increasing costs, that I can tell you as MLA for Millwoods and as labor critic, uh, my office has been inundated by people letting us know that they can't afford their bills and they're struggling to put food on the table for their families. And yet this session, none of that was a priority for this government. Uh, instead, as you described, we saw housekeeping pieces of legislation uh, and a real dearth of vision for Alberta families. Uh, just to follow up, I mean, this is the, the last summer, likely, before a provincial general election. What, what can we expect to see campaign-wise from your party coming up this summer? Um, and where are the areas that you're going to be focusing the most attention? So, uh, I think Rachel Notley, uh, the official opposition, the Alberta NDP, have been incredibly clear. We are focused on Alberta families and focused on what matters to Alberta families, including uh, the affordability crisis that we have right now with the cost of everything increasing, uh, the state of our current health care system, uh, and what we're hearing from particularly frontline workers who through two years of the pandemic uh, have been battered with increasing workloads and attacks from this UCP government. Uh, and I continue to hear from from uh, Alberta families and from constituents about the lack of trust that they have in this government. So I think those are three really important areas you're going to see us listening to Albertans about and talking about the, the opportunities we have going forward. We do not need to be wrapped up in internal UCP party drama. This province is bigger than that and we have bigger issues than that. Uh, who sits in the Premier's seat? Which of these UCP MLAs uh, doesn't make a material difference when they are not solving the challenges Alberta families are facing with the cost of everything going up. Sorry, permission to clarify that question. I meant geographically. Which oh. UCP, which UCP NDP, uh, MLAs do you think are easiest to... <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, uh, so I appreciate that clarification. Um, honestly, uh, I am getting correspondence uh, on behalf of constituents from UCP MLAs across the province saying, hey, my MLA won't listen to me. Will the NDP help me with this issue? Uh, I think that their constituents are disappointed with the performance they've seen and how distracted they've been across the province in all corners of Alberta. Um, that's certainly what I'm hearing in the correspondence that comes into my office. They stole all my questions, but I mean, is it safe to say you're you're both Edmonton MLAs? Or oh, no, Kathleen is. No. In Calgary. Is it safe to say I mean, the party is going to be focusing uh, a lot of the summer barbecue circuit on areas in Calgary? Well, you're certainly going to see us getting out and talking to Albertans. Uh, Stampede is coming up, and we're all excited to get down and uh, celebrate Stampede and visit with uh, families down in Calgary. Um, but you've also seen our official opposition uh, traveling throughout the province across the last three years. Our agriculture critic, Heather Sweet, uh, has been out uh, to all corners of this province multiple times, as have all of my colleagues. So we're going to continue to be talking to Alberta families around the province uh, and are excited to continue to do that. And just to follow up on, on something Janet was asking, I mean, we saw in this session a lot of um, commemorative uh, bills uh, establishing awards and, the, and the, you know, the official gemstone of Alberta. Um, I'm wondering, it, it really is contrasted with, you know, the, the summer of repeal and the, and the big yeah. sweeping legislation that Kenny first brought in when he first came in. So I'm wondering what 
you think his legacy is after this session, it could likely be his last session as, as Premier of the province. What do you think it says about his legacy? I think this session uh, is characterized by uh, a lack of uh, thought and a lack of vision to what is important to Alberta families. Um, we, as the official opposition, we supported a, a huge number of the pieces of legislation that were put through this session, uh, in particular because uh, they were Im important issues but didn't materially address cost of living, didn't address what's happening in our health care system, uh, and didn't speak to what Alberta families are looking for. Um, Everything from Bill 1, which increased scholarships, but uh, also bestowed titles on to ministers. Uh, no Albertan asked for that. Uh, again, this government has been distracted in their own uh, infighting, uh, their own attempt to hang on to power. And in the meantime, Alberta families are looking for real solutions. They're looking for genuine help. Uh, they are struggling to put food on the table and to support their families because of the increasing cost that the UCP is putting on everything. Go to questions on the phone. Just a reminder to press star nine if you're on the phone. Raise hand if you're joining us via Zoom. If you can say your name and outlet at the top, we'll go to our first call. Hoping someone can hear me right now. We can hear you. Um, beautiful. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you briefly touched on it there, but I just want to go into a little bit more detail. I'd love to get your two cents uh, on on Bill Number One that was given royal assent this week. That you know essentially gives that that honorable title to all cabinet ministers that you know former, current, future for for the rest of their lives. And I'm just speculating, or I'd like you rather to speculate on, on why that was, was thrown into the bill that otherwise dealt with, uh, I guess, rewards for for, uh, for young Albertans. So I'd love to know why you, why you think it would have been put in there and, and what importance it, it carries. Yeah, Bill 1 uh, expanded some existing scholarships uh, in honor of the, the Queen's Jubilee, but they also included a, a vanity title project uh, that Albertans didn't ask for. Uh, and I can only assume that that was motivated by uh, current UCP cabinet ministers wanting to hang on to uh, a fancy title. Not a single Albertan wrote to me in my office and suggested that this was anywhere near a priority for them. I have only heard from Albertans about the cost of living the struggle they're having to pay their bills with everything getting more expensive, with the UCP government uh, not helping families, and with the state of our current health care system. Uh, so there was a real disconnect between the priorities of this government and what Albertans are looking for. Any follow-up, Tim? Well, just on a larger scale, then, what does that say in your mind about this government's priorities? The, the government's priority seems to be their own internal drama and infighting uh, about trying to, to hang on to power by any means necessary uh, and to really focus on their own accolades. Uh, we need a government that's focused on what's happening for Alberta families, that is working day and night to solve real challenges that we have in our health care system that Albertans are facing with affordability. And to be incredibly clear, the UCP government has done nothing but add costs by lifting the caps on electricity, lifting the caps on insurance, increasing tuition, increasing park fees, increasing school fees. Over and over and over, they are making life more expensive, including putting in bracket creep, something that makes your taxes go up. This budget is taking a billion dollars more away from Alberta families. That is what Albertans are caring about, uh, and the government just doesn't seem to have a clue. And that's all for today. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, and to learn more, check out albertasfuture.ca.